strange. Hello, Donald. That's me. Where am I? Mathematic land. Mathematic land? It's the land of great adventure. Now, who are you? I'm a spirit, the true spirit of adventure. That's for me. What's that? A journey through the wonderland of mathematics. Mathematics? That's for all times. Eggheads? Now hold on, Donald. You like music, don't you? What? Well, without eggheads, there would be no music. Uh... Come on. Let's go to ancient Greece, to the time of Pythagoras. The master egghead of them all. Pythagoras? The father of mathematics and music. Mathematics and music? Ah, you'll find mathematics in the darndest places. Watch. First, we'll need a string. <coughs> Stretch it good and tight. Plunk it. Now divide in half. Plunk again. You see? It's the same tone, one octave higher. Now divide the next section. And the next. Pythagoras discovered the octave had a ratio of two to one. With simple fractions, he got this. And from this harmony in numbers developed the musical scale of today. You can imagine how excited Pythagoras was when he shared his findings with his pals of fraternity of eggheads, known as the Pythagoreans. They used to meet in secret to discuss their mathematical discoveries. Only members were allowed to attend. They had a secret emblem, the pentagram. Let's see what the topic is for today. formula came the basis of our music of today.
Ja. It was our old friend Pythagoras who discovered that the pentagram was full of mathematic. The two shorter lines combined exactly equal the third. And this line shows the magic proportions of the famous golden section. The second and third lines exactly equal the fourth. Once again we have the golden section. But this is only the beginning. Hidden within the pentagram is a secret for creating a golden rectangle, which the Greeks admired for its beautiful proportions and magic qualities. The star contains the golden rectangle many times over. It's a most remarkable shape. It can mathematically reproduce itself indefinitely. All these rectangles have exactly the same proportions. This figure also contains a magic spiral that repeats the proportions of the golden section into infinity. To the Greeks, the golden rectangle represented a mathematical law of beauty. We find it in their classical architecture. The Parthenon, perhaps one of the most famous of early Greek buildings, contains many golden rectangles. Portions are also found in their sculpture. In the centuries that followed, the golden rectangle dominated the idea of beauty in architecture throughout the Western world. The Cathedral of Notre Dame is an outstanding example. The Renaissance painters knew this secret well. Today, the golden rectangle is very much a part of our modern world. Modern painters have rediscovered the magic of these proportions. Indeed, this ideal proportion is to be found in life itself. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is mathematics. I got mathematics to figures like that. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Donald. Get me to write it. No, no. Ideal proportion. Not quite. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, I'm afraid not. Well, we can't all be mathematically perfect. Oh, yeah? Now that you're all pent up in a pentagon, let's see how nature uses this same mathematical form, the petunia, the star jasmine, the starfish, the wax flower, literally thousands of members in good standing in nature's Pythagorean Society of the Star. All nature's works have a mathematical logic and her patterns are limitless.
tragic proportions of the golden section are often found in the spirals of nature's designs. The profusion of mathematical forms brings to mind the words of Pythagoras. Everything is arranged according to number and mathematical shape. Yes, there is mathematics in music, in art, in just about everything. And as the Greeks had guessed, the rules are always the same. Enjoy your geometrical journey. Gee, Mr. Spirit, guess you're not moved to mathematics like two times two. That's right, Donald. And you